I'll just look in the top here. If you want to stand off on the side over here, and I'll stand here. First thing we do is give them a little smoke, lets them know that we're coming. Take a look. It's a good sign when the inner cover is stuck down. There you go. You see how they've made, we call this burk home at the top. They're running out of room, and so they'll start to fill every crack and void. Well, it's coming up to peak population. Their peak will be about 75,000. Mm -hmm. You can see the new nectar, the new white cappings. So essentially what they're doing is they start to cap that frame. They deposit the nectar in the open cells. They dry it down and evaporate the nectar at night. And when it gets down to the proper moisture content, they'll cap. And when they cap that over, the white cappings, they look like snow white. That's um, air that's trapped between, if you look, you can see how the cappings get sealed over slowly, slowly until it's just a little pinhole. They're working in here. You can see the white comb at the top. How many years have you been doing this? Uh, ooh, about 40 years. Since the mid 70s. What kind of bees are they? These are Carnioans. They're a strain of a uh, the form of, a of the Italian bee. Three-banded Italians are the most popular bee in, in the country now. There's a Carnioan, which is a Euro bee. It's darker. Does really well in our climate, winters well. They use, you can see some of this propolis material here. Propolis is called uh, bee gum bee glue I should say and uh, they'll coat the inside of the hive the cracks any gaps they'll coat with that propolis and it, it serves two purposes it sanitizes the hive and uh, seals any gaps or cracks you can kind of see like the little little propolis and wax there here again the combs are getting whitened up they're starting to fill fill these top supers here again is the pollen, the worker brood. Uh, they're storing nectar, but here you see drone brood. And drone is, you can see it's a bullet shaped cap versus a normal flat cap down here. Part of the varroa mite life cycle, they like the, uh, the size of the drone comb and that's where you'll find them. The uh, varroa, if there was a varroa in that cell, it would uh, be a little red disc about the size, the top of a pin, a pinhead. It's, it's quite visible. But as you can see, that's a very clean. There's no mites in that at all. Uh, very healthy. If, if it was varro infestation, what can happen is these wings can be curled, disjointed. Um, you know, they're just not formed right and that's a heavy mite infestation and you would find young bees like this with like half their wings gone or out at, at uh, abnormal angles walking around inside the hive or on a comb that's another bad sign of a row infestation wow, so they, they basically when they come out they will start their chores they will start out in the hive uh, cleaning housekeeping duties eventually they will go into feeding brood they, they mature, and then eventually they become a forager. Oh, what's her life cycle about? Or? Well, she can, uh, a good queen can go a couple of years. They used to go longer, but you know, with more emphasis on egg production and uh, the way that they breed queens now, you know, you're gonna get a good year you should be able to get two years after that very iffy yeah for actually a lot of the uh, um, oh I'd say the strides are being made in beekeeping uh, uh, discoveries new practices it, it starts with a small-scale beekeeper backyard clubs it you know it's amazing you know the breeding has taken large steps from uh, you know, uh, smaller producers. Uh, the price of honey is as high as it's ever been. 
uh, United States really imports way more honey than they can consume. So you know, the, um, you know, I mean, you just can't produce enough. So um, the price is generally up, and and because if you offer a good local product that's of course not blended with any um, uh, honey from other countries, there's always in demand. People are always looking for good uh, local honey. So, how does it feel to be a new beekeeper? Uh, reasonably okay, actually. Um, once you're around them, you don't really feel as much fear, although the one did get me in the beginning. But for time number two, it's really not that bad. Okay. Way to go.